Colorado just lost to a bad team. A lot of it was self-inflicted. This is unacceptable. You're watching right on cue, Buff Spot. Running the option on first down. Hagan has it. He has room. He's got one man to beat. Now he pitches to Flanagan, and he may take it all the way. Flanagan's in for the touchdown. He needs 28 yards to get him to 2,000. Here is the give to Salam. Salam to the outside. He's down to the 50. He's got 2,000. He's on his way. 20, 15, 10. Let's just go. He's got three people down there. The ball's up in the air. Welcome in, welcome in, welcome back. I am your host, Tyson Quiller. We got a new program today, starting, kicking it off for the upcoming college football season. This is right on cue, Buff Spot. We are going to be talking all things Colorado, Buffalo Athletics moving forward. We're going to try and go week to week. We're going to recap each game, maybe take a look at the upcoming schedule. Um, and I know things are probably a little raw, a little rough right now. So why don't we kick things off with this episode on a positive note. Congratulations to Cliff Branch and his family. Cliff Branch recently inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Branch played football for the Buffs in 1970 and 71. He was then drafted with the 98th overall pick of the 1972 draft to the Oakland Raiders, where he went on to compile 8,600 yards receiving and 67 touchdowns. Wildly impressive career. Cliff Branch, a lifelong buff, and now a Pro Football Hall of Famer. Now let's get to what you all probably tuned in for, and that was TCU at Colorado last night. Uh, TCU was, they started the week a 10.5 point uh, favorite over the Buffs. By, by the time of kickoff, it was up to about 14.5 point favorite. In Boulder, this was nationally broadcast on ESPN. You had that kind of weather delay, but the, but the fans showed up in force. 47,868, that's 95% of capacity at Folsom Field. Now, Colorado had not beaten a non-conference Power 5 opponent in 1,091 days, and they still haven't. Keep that clock counting. Since 2010, the Buffs only have two wins over non-conference Power 5 opponents. It's been bad for a while. By the way, those two wins at Nebraska, that last-minute deep bomb from Montez to LaVisca, man, was that sweet. And then, obviously, uh, Nebraska at home the very next year on that field goal kick. Now, coming into this game, we were all kind of left out in the dark about the quarterback situation, knowing it would be either Brennan Lewis, last year's starter, or JT Shrout, the Tennessee transfer. Um, let's not kid ourselves. Lewis was the starter coming into this. So we all said collectively, well, I hope the coaches were right when they said he got much better in the offseason. Well, the verdict is in, and no, no, he did not. I mean, I don't mean he, he that he just played bad. He has no confidence, and that is a deeper, more fundamental problem. Um, and that was the problem last year. Through three quarters of this game, he had 13 completions. And you might say, well, hey, 72% completion percentage, that ain't bad. Well, anyone who watched the game saw that those 13 completions, only one, one pass was for more than 10 yards. He finished the game with a 4.3 yards per pass. I mean, that's so bad, I can't even begin to express. You have no chance in a game when you get four yards per pass. I mean, just, just think about it. That would take 17 plays to get to the end zone off, off of a touchback, which, by the way, he didn't reach in this entire game. Now, I mean, listen, the kid is just a sophomore, so this isn't like me saying he's terrible. He may very well become a better quarterback, but he's just flat out not ready yet. It's a, it's a confidence thing. And the more and more you put him out there, and all he can do is throw five-yard passes, the more and more you're just crushing his confidence. Okay, let's move off of that and talk about some of the terrible decision-making and mental lapses. Okay, Lewis led the bus down to the TCU 15-yard line on the opening drive, 
and then they fail to convert a fourth and one. Now, personally, I do think it was the right call to go for it. I mean, with the understanding of how awful this offense has been over the last calendar year, I mean, there was no telling whether you'd even make it back to the red zone again. And, you know, it would have been a big momentum builder. But the play call was atrocious. Like a swing out option look, running parallel to the line of scrimmage with your quarterback. It's like, just line up the big uglies and let Fontano punch it across the line. Then, after the defense gets a big three and out on the next drive, Lewis throws up a crazy dangerous pass, and it's picked off. I mean, ultimately, they lucked out, and it was overturned by a P.I. call. But, I mean, it was just straight up thrown up for grabs. Just terrible judgment. They then get into the red zone, and a delay of game on third and five kills another drive, and you settle for a field goal. On the next drive, you have a formation infraction trying to get out of your own end zone, and then you lose contain on punt coverage, leading to this touchdown you're watching right here. So finally, Trout comes in, and he, I mean, he shows some real flashes in the passing game. Marches the bus down the field, and on fourth and two from the 20, another delay of game. I mean, the bus completely dominated the first half, but because of a series of mental errors and coaching mistakes, you're down six to seven at halftime. If you look at, I'll put up right here for you, the stats at halftime. I mean, complete domination, except where it matters most on the scoreboard. Now, coming out of the tunnel, everyone on planet Earth was expecting Shroud to start the second half. Now, I mean, I could see maybe starting Lewis if the game was still 6-7 to seven when the Buffs got the ball, but you had to change after TCU marched the opening drive right down the field, and now you're down 14-6. to six. I mean, you knew you had no big play capability in Lewis, and Shroud, I mean, really kind of was a revelation at the end of the first half. And wouldn't you know it, who takes the field again? Mr. Brennan Lewis. Again, this isn't a personal thing about Lewis. Like, Darrell and the coaching staff are not setting him up for success. And his confidence just continues to erode as the fans booed loudly. Now, you're going to hear Darrell and probably the athletic director, Rick George, come out and be all defensive and blame the fans, say you're being too mean on, on a young kid or whatever. But the fans were absolutely right here, okay? This was your opening drive. Wide run for a loss of one yard. Terrible pass three yards out to the feet of the receiver, and then a, a two-yard pass completion. Three and out. I mean, what? Like, they didn't even take a chance at anything. Going back to Lewis after seeing Shrout throw for as many yards as Lewis did on just three passes is, is inexcusable. So sure enough, TCU marches right down the field. Luckily, the defense bows their back and in the red zone, and they force TCU to a field goal. So then here we are. The Buffs are down 17-8. to eight. It's still a game. And who comes out to play quarterback again? You guessed it. Brendan Lewis. One of the first plays of the drive. Daniel Arias is running a go route and is wide open deep. Lewis doesn't even see him. He dumps it down for nine yards to the running back, Deion Smith. I, I mean, the, the announcers even commented on it. Like, he was wide open. And... Lewis just must not have even gotten to him in his progressions. I mean, that's... Arias had himself about an 80-yard sprint. Then, though, you did start getting some traction. Uh, and they get a couple of first downs just in time for some terrible coaching to rear its ugly head again. On fourth and five from TCU's 40, Colorado punts from TCU's 40. Remember, we're only down 17 to 8. We have the ball at their 40. And we punt... You're seeing on your screen right now, it goes into the end zone for a touchback. They bring it out to the 25-yard line. That play netted you 15 yards of field position. I mean, what is that? That's nothing. So finally, Shroud comes in, down 24-6. to six. You end up going for it from your own 30-yard line, totally screwing the defense. And sure enough, they don't convert. You know, I mean, when Shroud came in, they passed it eight straight times. I mean, it was so obvious that they were going to pass. There was no possibility of a run, and the defense just queued in on it. He had no chance. Listen, Shrout must be the starter moving forward. Okay, I mean, this offense is so limited with Lewis. Uh, you have to start Shrout for this Air Force game coming up next weekend. Now, a quick note about the defense. Now, Quinn Perry and Trevor Woods played well, combined for 14 tackles. You know, coming up from the safety position, Woods had a couple of big open field stops, 
And Josh Chandler Samedo, he showed some flashes, the transfer from West Virginia. But this defense just completely fell apart in the second half. They gave up 261 yards rushing in the second half alone. I mean, terrible missed tackles all over the field. The D-line got completely owned at the point of attack. Listen, Chris Wilson, he better get this buttoned up. Otherwise, Air Force is going to run for like 400 yards on us next week. You know, hey, we have to face facts, folks. Colorado just lost to a bad team. I mean, TCU played three quarterbacks. Their defense didn't force a single turnover, and they still beat us by 25 points at home. A lot, like I said, was self-inflicted. This is not acceptable. You know, as a lifelong Buff fan, I you know, I grew up watching back-to-back -back Orange Bowls, okay? CJ and Darian Hagan, uh, Alfred Williams, okay? And then as I'm going through middle school, we've got uh, Cordell Stewart, Eric Bieniemy, Rashawn Salam. You know, fast forward, I'm graduating high school and watching the Buffs that in the Barnett era, okay? Daniel Graham, Sean Tufts, Chris Brown, 62-36, going to a Fiesta Bowl. I mean, what... Are we watching nowadays out of Colorado football? It's it's so defeating and embarrassing and humiliating. So here's a look at the upcoming slate. Listen, I mean, they may not be favored in a single game for the rest of the year. I mean, we better see some real improvement or you have to seriously consider moving on from Durrell. But hey, tell me what you think. Is it keep hope alive, Buff fans, or have we just given up? Send me your feedback at WriteOnQCS on Twitter, WriteOnQCS at gmail.com. And until next time, go Buffs. Running the option on first down. Hagan has it. He has room. He's got one man to beat. Now he pitches to Flanagan, and he may take it all the way. Flanagan's in for the touchdown. He needs 28 yards to get into 2,000. Here is the give to Salam. Salam.